Designed by the great Victorian engineer Joseph Bazalgette in the 1860s, London's sewer system was once the envy of the world. And for much of the last 150 years, it's kept London's waste flowing smoothly. But Mr Bazalgette's marvellous system of pipes and tunnels was not built with our modern day eating and flushing habits in mind. And he certainly wouldn't have taken into consideration the fearsome fatbergs that regularly menace our sewer system. Fatbergs are massive deposits of congealed fat and other waste, and they're cropping up more and more often. In 2013, one weighing a colossal 15 tonnes caused havoc in Kingston-upon-Thames, while other monstrous blockages have turned up in Leicester Square and Shepherd's Bush. Today, I'm joining a team of Thames water flushers who have the unenviable job of getting rid of the capital's latest fatberg, which is almost blocking one of the main sewers running under Whitehall. Well, to give you an idea of the sheer size of the fatberg under my feet right now, it would stretch right along this Whitehall street to about the size of a jumbo jet. And that's an awful lot of fat, oil and grease. Can I just jump? going in. It's quite unlike anything I've smelt before. Sort of a bit like vomit, <laughs> but, but earthy, you know, with undertones of poo. We've all been kitted out with gas monitors, which beep reassuringly to let us know that the air is safe to breathe. It stretches for as far as I can see in both directions. And it's just a congealed mass of fat, oil and grease mixed in with a whole load of other stuff that really shouldn't be here. And this is an old Victorian sewer. It should be flowing with water. Before the fatberg can be washed down through the sewer system, flushers like Gary have the exhausting job of smashing it up into manageable chunks. Ugh. You can imagine what it does. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't want to see that in your drain pipe, would you? Not really. No. I don't want to see it in my sewer. <laughs> once you've broke it through, if you if you go out with, against the flow, you just push it behind you like that, and it'll go down, because that's crystal clear down there, mm -hmm. and we just work our way upstream. And how do you, I mean, how do you cope with this every day? It's just, just you know, you just sort of get on with it? A strong nose. You've got to have a strong nose for this. <laughs> but, like, you start off, you're like, oh, but once you get used to it, I can't feel nothing now. I can't smell nothing. I think I've burnt my sinuses. Does it ever feel like you're fighting a losing battle? No, it's actually quite a challenge. I enjoy a challenge. I don't. I can't sit a fighting battle because if we, we sit here and you can chisel your way through a whole day of chiselling fat, and you think oh, I've done quite good. What's your message to people? I mean, how do we stop this? My message is: don't pour fat down a drain. This fatberg has formed in Whitehall because it's right next to the West End, where there are hundreds of restaurants, cafes and hotels, all using cooking oil. Some of these have obviously been slinging their used oil down the drains and feeding the fatberg. But as more businesses become aware of the problems they can cause, there's been a growing demand for oil recycling services. We provide a service to any cafes, um, restaurants, hotels, office buildings with canteens, um, basically anywhere that needs to dispose of their used cooking oil in the correct way. Lee's making collections for one of several oil recycling companies that have sprung up in recent years. Today he's picking up from restaurants in the West End. Whew. So in these blue containers, this specific one holds up to 60 litres of used cooking oil. It can get pretty heavy. I have done roughly 20 collections so far today. Um, the volume ranging from 20 litres right up to 300 litres from one particular restaurant. So you can imagine the amount of oil we're saving from going down the drains. Food businesses have a duty of care and legal requirement to dispose of their cooking oils responsibly and councils have been clamping down on offenders. We provide certificates to say we are collecting it, it's been disposed of correctly so when the council come around and check on those restaurants they can then prove that they haven't just tipped it down the drain 
All of the used cooking oil that's collected gets turned into diesel biofuel, a greener alternative to standard fuel. Back in the sewer, though, the Fatberg serves as a reminder that not enough businesses are acting responsibly with costly consequences. What are the repercussions for a sewer like this blocking with fat? Well, you know, worst case scenario is flooding people's homes, you know. You know, we don't want to do that, you know. People don't realise this is the major cause of floods. It's absolutely awful to have sewage coming up in your kitchen sink. So we've just had Christmas in London. Mm, yeah. Has that had an effect? We usually have a 25% increase in blockages over Christmas period. So obviously everyone enjoying their turkey, you know, and they're not really disposing it correctly as they should. Who wants flooding at Christmas? You know, who wants sewage in their kitchen? It, it stops the dinner fast. Thames Water's Singing Sewer Men regularly release a YouTube Christmas video encouraging us to stop dumping fat, equivalent to one million Christmas puddings, down our drains. And the fat from your poultry. This Christmas, put your oil and fat in the bin. Fat may be the main culprit, but there's other stuff we're chucking down here that's making things even worse. There's wet wipes in it, you can see. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, these are a problem, aren't wipes. they? These, you know, that's what binds it all together, the fat and the wet wipes, really. That's a quite new thing, yeah. is it? You know, on the packs of all the, you know, all the wet wipes uh, wrappers, it says they're flushable, but they're not. You know, they don't break down like toilet paper. How big is this problem? This, you know, we, we spend £12 million a year on just cleaning normal sewers. This is, and this is probably the worst of it that you can see around you. This location um, has been jetted a few times to actually break it up and help it flow downstream for treatment. Well, I've survived my first trip down London sewers, my first Fatberg. Interesting experience, not one I want to repeat anytime soon. London homes and businesses produce around 40 million litres of used cooking oil every year and we've all got a part to play in making sure used fat and oil doesn't end up going down the kitchen sink. It's worth remembering that the pipes from our homes are only about 10 centimetres in diameter so you could easily end up with your very own mini fatberg for the plumber to sort out and just running the hot tap and squeezing some washing up liquid down the sink doesn't make any difference. Hopefully, though, if more of us Londoners join in with the fight against the fatbergs, then Sir Joseph will be able to rest easy, safe in the knowledge that his extraordinary sewers are once again flowing freely. Oh,